All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm Remy Baumgarten. Uh, I work at uh, ANRC Services, uh, and today I'm going to present a tool I've been working on for uh, a little while now. And uh, you know, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, some of the contact information is up here. Uh, if you want to take that down, um, otherwise, uh, I'll, I'll give you the link to the slides and uh, the link to the tool at the end of the presentation. So a little bit about me. Um, again, I work for NRC Services. Um, I mostly do uh, mobile malware talks. Here's a few of the, uh, talk, uh, the cons I've done on my talk set. Uh, presently, um, I am doing R&D um, at NRC, at mostly with iOS Android. Um, I also do uh, security instruction for uh, the company as well. Um, before that, I was a senior consultant on the malware team at Booz Allen Hamilton. And before that, I was an intern at Secure DNA. Um, so why a new tool? There's, uh, you know, there's a lot of new tools out there that are coming out all the time, especially at DEF CON. Um, and I, I believe that there was a gap that I wanted to fill, uh, especially in the area for uh, Mac and uh, malware analysis. Uh, I also believe that visualization is a great way to learn how um, complicated things work. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why we created this tool, MacoViz. Uh, there's also not many uh, security products out there to analyze Mako files. Th there are a few. I'm going to show you them. I'm going to show you the pros and cons, and I'm going to show you um, what I'm trying to fill the gap in with. Uh, there's also a lack of web-based free reverse engineering tools to use on any device. Um, most of the tools require that you use Windows or Linux or uh, Mac. Th in this case, you could use it on the iPad or Android, which is, uh, which is uh, pretty unique. Um, there's also really a strong need, at least from what I've heard about, um, need about the ability to quickly identify malicious files and automatically create snort signatures um, on the fly, especially to people without much training. So um, some of the tools that I've used um, that I really enjoy um, that you know were a big inspiration to this project um, were Ida Pro, OTool, ClassDump, MacoView, PTool, OTool, NG, and Hopper. Um, a few of these, especially MacoView, have been um, really, really helpful in just basically um, making sure that everything I was doing was um, correct. Uh, so with, with this chart, um, you know, some of it's arguable. Uh, I did the best that I could to my ability. Um, however, there's five categories right here. Um, and with MacoViz, I tried to do um, basically a yes check mark in all of them. And that's that making it graphical, having multiple architectures, making it network security aware, easy to understand, and, ve and be easy, very easy to use. So basically the goal of the project, again, is to combine the features of all those programs and speed up the process, plus add this network security element to the mix. Ultimately, at the end of the day, the goal is to help the network defender understand the Mako file format better and provide an effective and efficient way to analyze a particular binary for malicious behavior. So with that, I'm introducing MacoViz in beta. Um, it basically presents the Mako binary in a visual format. For, you, for those that you don't know that Mac, what a Mako file is, it's basically the file format used on iOS and Mac devices. If you're familiar with Windows, you're going to see PE file format and for uh, with Linux it's going to be the ELF file format. So uh, and basically in turn this makes it easier for anybody to see visually how the file is constructed. Uh, and it, it might not be that new of a concept to you if you've used Ida Pro. There's a little uh, ribbon band at the top that shows you the whole entire uh, file structure broken up. So um, we, we took that a step further with this tool though and you'll see in a minute how that works. Um, so you're going to see the visual representation from the header through the load commands and into the corresponding sections and segments. Um, it's also interactive so you can zoom into the segments for more detail. Um, in addition to that, we also wanted to create a back end um, graph and visualization plus an analytics system for graphing the binaries disassembly, very similar to what you're going to see in IDA or Hopper if you're familiar with that. Um, currently, we're only supporting um, these architectures right now, um, 86, 8664, ARM 6 and 7. Uh, again, that's only for Mako, but uh, we have the ability and um, we'd like to expand it if there is enough interest to um, other architectures. Uh, we also wanted to keep this program not only visual but also accessible again, so that means we could use a web browser and any other type of platform. Again, uh, more design features. Uh, we wanted to keep the back end 
as Mac as possible. And by that I mean that um, when Apple updates its specs for um, the Mako file format, which it has done very recently, the tool is automatically already updated because uh, the system's you know keeping up to date with everything Apple's doing. Um, so it's it's this the whole entire tool is working in its native environment, um, and it, and by that it's always updated and relevant by default. Um, we also get to gain access to the LLVM disassembler for the most accurate assembly we could feed into our analytics engine. Uh, we also make use of many of the open source utilities that Apple provides and many other um, web open source utilities um, for this project as well. So uh, this is the main page of what the application looks like when you go to the website. At the very top you're going to see um, a few different things that you could take a look at. The first is going to be the instructions. Um, the white paper which I really highly recommend you read if you want to um, really see how to use the application. Um, there's about three malware samples that are walked through step by step um, and it will show you exactly all the features and how to use it. Um, I only have 20 minutes today so I can't show you everything. Um, there's also fact and contact information. So essentially all you need to do is upload your binary um, and then click the upload file. But before you do that there was something I want to mention to you uh, when you actually do do this um, if you're not familiar with how Mako um, files work or how Apple um, packages their applications. Uh, this is an actual diagram of an IPA. So an, an IPA is an iPhone application or iPad application and essentially it's a zip file. So if you uh, change the dot IPA to a zip and then you extract it and then you open up the payload folder and then you uh, right click you could show package contents and then inside that you're going to see a whole entire directory containing database files or resources and then the actual binary itself. Um, if you run file on one of these binaries uh, especially for uh, in this case on the iPhone you're going to see two architectures. In this case for Facebook you're going to see ARM version 7 and ARM version 6 both Mako ARM executables. Um, so at the very top of the application it's actually divided into two different parts. Um, this is the visual file explorer and at the very top you can see that there's a key that will show you what all the colors mean along the way. So uh, at the very top you're going to see the header, the load commands, executable code, data, file architecture, objective C, static info and code signature. Um, and by clicking in any of these major segments you basically could drill down to get further information about what is going on inside that file format. So in this example I clicked on the uh, file header itself and you can see the magic number right there is feed face. Um, and then the CPU type which is uh, 12 and then um, the CPU subtype which is 9. And that basically just stands for ARM um, version 7. Um, in the future uh, we're going to add um, documentation pop ups. So if you could hover over anything it will um, basically give you the information, um, more information about what exactly you're looking at in the uh, visual file explorer. Uh, this is just the, the load commands. Again, um, another view of what it looks like when you're joined down into uh, different uh, parts of the file format itself. The second part of the application is the graph visualizer, and this contains three major areas. Uh, the first being the interactive graph function search, the second being the security assessment, and the third being the graph data display pane. I'm going to show you what all three of those look like, and then I'm going to give you a demo of the application itself. So the first is the interactive graph function search and at the very top left it's I know it's kind of hard to see but um, it says functions and it's basically going to do an analysis of the whole entire binary and give you a drop down menu of all the functions in the application itself. So when you select any of those functions it's going to automatically draw that graph for you right below in the graph pane. Okay. The second one um, and the third one the name xrefs and the strings basically um, are going to list all the strings and the cross references um, for you and when you select one of them it's going to it's going to search the binary and then populate the results into the to the um into the search results which is the last drop down menu on the right. So whenever you select the names xrefs or the strings remember that that search results is going to contain all the functions that are going to have any of those references that you looked at when you did those searches. Um, the second part is a security assessment. Um, right now where I, the way that we're doing this is we're identified code segments which are using APIs and functions flagged as security risks. 
Uh, we're also identifying an automatically generated network and static file signatures for the binary. Uh, basically we're doing this in two ways. The first way is uh, the network way by detecting network domains, IP addresses, URLs, web protocols embedded in the binary itself. And the second is calculating a unique um, binary signature for the file itself using the Mako magic value in the file's header plus unique 16 bytes from the binary string table. Um, using those we're going to basically get snort signatures which I'll show you in a second. Um, by selecting a potential security risk, the functions are um, located containing the risk. So this is the security assessment, what it looks like, um, the, the pane itself. And if you see the drop down right here you can see that I've selected the system function call. So by actually selecting that it's going to fill in the search results which you saw just a minute ago and it's going to show you the, all the functions in the application that are using that, um, that, that call in the application. So you can drill down directly to the places where those potential security risks will be so your, so your an analysts could look exactly at what potential malicious behaviors might be uh, inside that binary. So when I do that system it's actually doing a search right here. Um, you guys. <laughs> hey, you know the drill. This is how it goes, right? What are we doing? Shot the noob. All right. We're going to do it as fast as we can because we know it's a short talk. All right, we need one person from the audience who's new, first hand, right here, yellow shirt. Let's go. Up on stage. <laughs> Paul's not having a good time. Someone had a late night. <laughs> Congratulations to all of you for getting up. How's the speaker doing so far? Doing okay? All right, to our new speaker. We have two more to do this hour. Nobody has any expectations. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thanks a lot. You said he feels better all of a sudden. <laughs> um, so yeah. <laughs> Um, so by, by clicking that, that um, security scan results system, we're actually, you could see this little pop up here that's um, basically looking through the whole entire binary and finding Great the. Uh, Is he doing a good job? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, so we find uh, three functions containing uh, the reference to system um, and then we update the search results containing that. So if you look at the search results you're going to see um, three functions where you can click on it. Uh, and right here you can see the actual search results. Those are the functions containing uh, the uh, places you want to look at. All right, so the, the bottom, the last part um, which is contains most of the stuff you're going to be looking at is the, gra the graph data display pane. And this is divided into six tabs. The first being the graph view which is like your eye to like interface. It's completely interactive. You could zoom, scale, um, highlight and a few other things. Um, you're also going to have your hex view just like IDA, strings, objective C, um, we're doing that via class dump, um, disassembly via LLVM disassembly and then also network security which is going to contain your uh, snort signatures. So the graph view right here um, with a few highlights I've demonstrated, um, you can see uh, it looks again very similar to IDA or Hopper. How are we doing this? Um, basically we're parsing the O-tool disassembly of the binary and then we're, um, we're doing a lot of magic. I don't have too much time to talk about it but we're turning it into uh, graph viz charts and then we're taking those uh, graph viz charts into HTML um, and placing them as SVG with uh, JavaScript and CSS to give you all the visual effects. Um, so with the hex view basically you, cl you click on uh, the, the visual file explorer like this. So in this case we're clicking on dynamic loader info and um, the dynamic loader info it's basically if you're going to look at that it's just all the information you're going to see for that particular type of um, information from the visual file pane is going to be uh, hex values. So um, this is what the hex values for the, um, the area looks like. This is the second pane. The third pane is the strings um, and the strings are displayed in full uh, and provided with short names in the left for easier lookup references within the code. Um, this 
uh, if you look at the disassembly by itself with the tools Apple provides, it doesn't give you short names. So we had to um, develop an algorithm to actually do this and then have it cross reference uh, to a particular area within the file format itself um, where these strings actually existed. So this is uh, a little bit tougher than it looks. Um, um, for the Objective C part, um, we're, we're using um, class dump here. And class dump basically generates uh, headers from the Mako files. If you're not familiar with it, it's basically a reverse engineer's wet dream if you're working with Mako file format. It's awesome. Um, and I'll show you an example of how uh, effective that is when we're um, looking at one of the samples here in a minute. The third is a dis uh, the, the, next, the next panel is a disassembly view. Um, and this is taken from LLVM disassembly. Uh, again, we're paginating here, uh, so you could uh, basically change how many lines you want and then uh, just change pages. Uh, and the last tab, which is uh, the most useful to the uh, network, network ana analyst, is the uh, network security pane. And here you could see um, we developed some snort signatures, um, and you could see some URLs, and you could basically plug and play these right into your IDS system. Um, these are going to contain domains, IP addresses, URLs, and protocols if you in fact um, find that the file itself is malicious. The bottom is a file signature um, and again we're uh, doing that uh, unique 16 bytes from the string table uh, that I talked about earlier. So um, with that let me give you a demo of two um, examples of um, analyzing uh, different samples. The first is Yon2 Trojan and the second is uh, Mac Defender. A little bit of background about both. Uh, the Yon2 Trojan um, it basically infects Chrome, uh, Firefox, and Safari in the Mac. It uses uh, social engineering to install an, an HD plugin. So um, let me pull up this video. Okay, so um, again, this is the, the front page, and I'm going to select uh, the, the um, Yon2 Trojan, which is called Custom Installer, and I'm going to upload it. And at this point, it's going to analyze and uh, generate the graphs. It's going to analyze all the assembly of the file. It's going to basically um, break apart all the functions, create the SVG files, and then it's going to then it's going to do some optimization um, to minimize the network load over. Um, so when you when you pull it down, it's going to be a lot smaller. Uh, we also calculate the entry point right here. Um, so this is uh, what it looks like, the onto Trojan. Um, and you can see I'm opening up the header right here and you can see a few different values. Uh, there's the magic number, the CPU type and so forth. Again, I clicked on the top level and now I'm looking at the load commands and you can see all the different load commands here. And then um, I'm going to go down to the bottom and uh, quickly look at the security assessment. And you can see that there's a 16 security risks that we deemed that are um, essential to look at. And um, with that, uh, there's a few things I want to show you. Uh, this is the graph view. You can see I, I can move it around. Uh, this is a strings view. And you can see uh, a bunch of uh, potentially interesting URLs and file locations that are, are kind of sketchy that might immediately pop out to you. And then um, Objective C. So uh, with the Objective C, this is again class dump. So uh, I took a head look ahead before, and I found a um, really interesting uh, method or interface for a method uh, in here, and it's called uh, extension installer. So this one immediately was pointed out, and um, one of the uh, methods right here is called install Safari extension. So uh, basically, what you could see right here is there's an address. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that address. And I'm going to plug it right into the functions um, right here. Just paste it right in there, and then it's going to automatically uh, generate the graph for me, um, and then display uh, this particular method, so I could take a look at exactly what's going on in this installation method itself. So this is the graph view, um, and I'm going to show you the whole entire size of the graph view by clicking Zoom Extent. This is the whole entire method displayed right here. So I'm going to zoom in. And um, I'm going to show you a few different things of what exactly is happening um, within this installation itself. The first thing you can see right here is um, STR library um, Safari um, extension. Um, and that is a short name for the string, which you can see at the bottom right here. So this is the URL. You probably can't see it, but it's uh, library Safari uh, extensions. And that's going to be the, the, the location or the directory of um, where they're going to want to install this. And that's a highlight right there. And then the next thing you're going to see um, is the Safari extension plist short name. And I'm going to go ahead and find that string over here. 
and see what exactly that means. And you can see that um, it actually is the extensions.plist. So what I can kind of, kind of infer right now is that they're actually modifying the extension plist for Safari. Um, so um, looking further down in this routine, um, I'm, I'm basically looking for something else. Um, probably they're going to write a value. So taking a look further into this, I'm going to zoom in and see that um, essentially there's going to be a string called str enabled and they're going to be writing a, a one to it. So we're going to see an LEAQ or a load effective address. And uh, from there you could uh, basically see that um, the value is turned on to one. So that's enabled right there. Um, there's a lot easier ways to do this. I wanted to show you the hard way. Um, and let's see how much time I left? Three minutes? Great. And uh, for the strings, basically I could have just gone to the uh, STR um, Safari extension right here and it's basically going to show me the same exact graph uh, that I pulled up before. So uh, it's basically the reverse of what I was just doing. So looking down, um, it's going to show the same graph that I just had. So let me, uh, due to short of time, let me uh, skip forward a little bit. This is a disassembly view. And this is uh, the snort pane right here. So again, we have all our snort signatures of this Yantu Trojan that we could plug directly into uh, our IDS system. All right, so moving forward, th the next one is uh, Mac Defender. And we're going to build this chart right here. And uh, right here, I just want to point out that uh, Mac Defender is actually multiple architectures. That's why you saw two big blocks. One of them was x86 and then one, one other one was x64. Uh, for this, this is really interesting because what we're going to do right here is um, we're going to find a method called um, is file infected because what Mac Defender is, it's the fake antivirus. So we're going to look for um, this, this interesting method called is file infected. And um, by pulling this method up right here, we could see uh, the whole entire um, routine that is going to be used um, for, the, uh, for the actual um, virus detection for this application of this malware. So this is the uh, entire um, antivirus routine. Um, fast forward a little bit. So um, looking closely right here, um, you can see that basically this is the world's smallest AV file infection detection routine in, in the world. Um, it uses a random number generator for scan time and, um, and that's, pretty much, uh, that's pretty much it for, the, uh, for, for what, this, for what um, this, the way that this uh, file actually scans this file. So just taking a look at one routine um, due to shortness of time, it's very interesting. The last thing I want to show you today is the network security. So this is um, basically what you get at the end, um, snort sigs. These are mostly um, porn URLs. So what this application is doing is going to the net and hitting a bunch of porn URLs. So you can put this all into your snort database right here. Um, so um, with that, let me give you the links uh, for, uh, for this presentation. Uh, so at the top, this is the uh, beta URL. Um, we don't have too much bandwidth capacity, so um, if you do hit it, if you, might have, you might have trouble if everybody starts hitting it once, just uh, try it a little later. Um, and below is a slides URL too. Uh, the white paper is also listed on these, this uh, MacOviz Mach Mach uh, beta URL. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, I'll be over there outside and I hope you enjoyed my talk. Thank you everybody.